Hi, this is Dave from JavaCodeJunkie.com. Welcome to our fifth episode in the Java FX for Beginners series. In this episode, we're going to look at creating our first Java FX GUI program. So let's get right to it. In Eclipse, we're going to click on the File menu, click New. And last time when we created a program or a project, we did it from scratch, but right now I'm just going to do it the way that we would like to do it when, once we've installed the EFX Clips plugin. So let's go to Project, and here we'll select Java FX Project from the Java FX section. Click Next. Project name, we're going to call it First Program. Next. Next one more time and then finish. Well, let's open up the source folder and the application package and open the main.java program class. And we'll see here that uh, the EFX Clips plugin has created a shell of a program for us. Now, at this point, we don't know what all of this means, but what I'm going to do is explain this part of it to you today. So I'm going to first get rid of it all, and then we're going to put it back in one piece at a time. So let's delete. Now, in Java FX, uh, Windows. In Java FX, the main window or stage as it's called is created by the application class when the program launches. This primary stage is passed through to the start method, so we have access to that first stage. Within a stage is a scene. A stage can only have one scene at a time, similar to a play in a theater. There's a stage now there could be multiple stages but each stage can show only one scene at a time within a scene we have all of the content that we want to display to the end user things like labels text areas buttons and that sort of thing so the first thing we need to do since the stage is already created for us We'll need a scene. So we'll just create one. And control space will bring up the uh, autocomplete in Eclipse. And we'll see that there are a number of different constructors for the scene class. So for each of the constructors that we see here in the uh, class completion Java doc, we see that the first argument to the constructor in all cases is uh, an object of type parent. And, and customarily, this object is called root. Now you could call it whatever you want, but root simply signifies that it is the, it is the root of the scene graph. So the scene itself can contain only one object. Now that's not really very useful if, if you want to contain a whole or if you want the scene to have a whole bunch of different objects for the user to interact with. So the root is normally one of the so-called layout managers in Java FX. So before we get into completing uh, that creation of the scene object, let's just take a minute and go to Google and we'll look up the OpenJFX 14 API documentation at OpenJFX. So on this screen, just scroll down till we get to the documentation, and on the right we have a panel for JavaDoc. Click on Visit. If you remember back to the constructors for the scene object that we were just looking at, the first argument is of type parent. So we'll look that up in the Java doc. So click this first one, javafx.scene.parent. It's a type. 
So the parent class is a class for all nodes that can have children in the scene graph. So the scene graph itself only contains one root node. Now that could be a button, or it could be a label, or it could be a text field, but at that, at that point that's very restrictive because it can only have one. So what we need to do is construct another object to pass through to the scene constructor that is a parent or one of the descendant classes of parent that can contain multiple objects. And those are the layout manager. So I'm, I'm getting into having to explain some things that we haven't learned yet, that we haven't seen, but in order to get you through this first Java FX GUI program, we're going to have to just gloss over some of these things and we'll get into them in a lot more detail in future episodes. The parent is the ancestor class of three subclasses and they are group, region, and web view. Web view we'll, we'll not look at for right now, but let's look at these first two. First one, group. Group contains an observable list of children that are rendered in order whenever the node is rendered. A group will take on the collective bounds and its children and is not directly resizable. So for that reason, for the most part, I don't like to use a group. So let's back up and let's look at the region subclass. So region is the base class for all JavaFX node-based user interface controls and all layout containers. This is where we want to be. So a region is a parent since it's a subclass of parent. So it can be used in our call to the scene constructor, as can any of the subclasses. Direct known subclasses include the class pane. And subclasses of pane contain all of the various dialog panes, anchor panes, border panes, flow panes, and those layout managers that we will be using in this JavaFX course. So for the purposes of illustration and just getting through, I'm going to pick the border pane. Now the border pane, for any of you who have ex some experience in Swing, is similar to the border layout manager in that it has within it five separate sections. The top, the left, the right, the bottom, and the center. This is generally how desktop programs are laid out. So let's go ahead and create a border layout back in Eclipse. So we're going to, before we get to call the scene class and create a scene, we're going to say border pane, and we're just going to call it root. Equals new border pane. Organize the imports with Control Shift O. Sorry, and we'll correctly spell border pane. Now this border pane that we've constructed called root can be passed through as the first argument to the scene object. So we can use any of these constructors. And the one that I typically like to use includes a parent and a width and a height for the scene. So let's use that one. So we'll say root. 600, width 600, and height 300. Once we've created the scene, the scene has to be attached to the stage. The application class has given us a stage called primary stage, so at this point we're going to use that stage. So we're going to attach our scene object, which contains our root node, the border pane, to the primary stage, which is created by the application object. So we'll say
primary stage dot set scene. We're going to set it to scene. So once we have the root node assigned to the scene object, the scene object assigned to the stage, we have to make the stage visible. And that's done by primary stage dot show. At this point, we can run this program and we'll get a window of uh, 600 pixel width by 300 pixel height, but there's not going to be anything in it because we haven't added anything to our border pane. So let's close that down. So what I'm going to do in this, just to for the purposes of illustration again, now that we, we have a perfectly legitimate Java FX program, is I'm going to put something in each one of the five regions that I showed you earlier, the top, the bottom, the left, the right, and the center. So I'll just do that and uh, I'll come back and show you when we're done and we'll move on. Okay, so that part's done. So what I've done is I have created a new button for each of the five sections, top, bottom, left, right, center. And again, we haven't looked at the button class in Java FX, but I just needed something to, to just put in there for the purposes of illustration. So I picked a button. So we've added a button to each one of the sections of the border layout. Top, bottom, left, right, and center. Let's run that. And again, we'll get the same 600 by 300 window. Now in the top section we'll see here and the, these buttons are aligned based on the default alignment for the various section of the border lay, border pane the top the left the right which you see is down from so the top takes the entire top the bottom takes the entire bottom the left takes the space between the top and the bottom that's left over the right the same thing between the top and the bottom any leftover space and center claims all the space that's not claimed by the other four areas. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to take a more in-depth look at the layout managers. And the first layout manager we're going to start with is the one that we've just used, border pane. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to receive a notification when I post new videos. Be safe out there and until next time, keep on coding.